Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Jules and I enjoy long walks in the woods and I only own one colour of socks and I enjoy sharing my creative pursuits with you here on this here channel. However, I'm also in the middle of a massive creative block at the moment and let me tell you, when you have a channel where you like to share content every two weeks, it's a little bit stressful to be in a creative block. I've not had many great ideas uh, recently. However, I think this may have spawned this video in quite a timely fashion because I think that it's always nice to see what other people do when they're in a creative block. And also maybe we can just have a chat, you know, have like a little bit of a, a you know, share the woes of what to do when you don't have any creative ideas. I'm grateful that it's not my job. <laughs> First and foremost, uh, it's a whole other problem. But anyway, I'm here to talk with you today about colour charts. As you can see here, I have a few options. And in between, maybe we can have a have a little discussion. So do like the video if you are into that kind of thing. If you've ever had a creative block, uh, creative block, <laughs> creative block, like the video. Let's have some solidarity here. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see, you know, generally what I've been doing lately, which is a lot of this stuff. And in the comments, let me know what, what kind of content you would like to see on the channel if you have any good ideas, because I am running low. And also what you do to get out of a creative block. So, without further ado, oh, uh, I have a cup of coffee here. I recommend having a cup of coffee. It is a Sunday after all, and it's a good afternoon to have a cup of coffee. I wanted to talk you through, so when I don't have any ideas of anything to actually make and I feel like I've never made anything before in my life and can't remember what that was like, I make a lot of colour charts. I also make a lot of colour charts when I'm feeling creative and normal because I love looking at colour, which is, you know, kind of how this channel began. But um, I've been making a lot of these recently because I had this idea to come up with a lot of different ideas of, of layouts for colour charts so I could try something new. Um, yeah, so without further ado, I will get into things sort of in order of simplicity, I, I, I suppose, which, which involves shuffling this up a little bit completely. So my, I have a variety of uh, colour palette ideas here, which vary from um, situations where you want to try mixing a lot of different colours or situations where you want to try mixing from a very limited palette of colours, whether you have three colours or four colours or, you know, eight colours. I We have a situation for all of those scenarios here. And starting with this very, very simple kind of colour chart. So the three colours here that I was mixing, you can see here on the left, this is Quinacridone Fuchsia by Roman Schmoll, and then their Transparent Turquoise and Nickel Azo Yellow. And these were just colours that I mixed from these. And these are swatch charts kind of inspired by, I believe that Denise Soden used to make these kinds of colour charts. And what you can see is that here I've kept it very simple. Here is the Quinacridone Fuchsia mixed with the Transparent Turquoise. And without any kind of particular order, I've just kind of mixed them in varying proportions, varying water levels. I accidentally dropped some water on here. Your colour charts don't have to be picture perfect. You know, you're not a machine. If we wanted a machine to do it, then we would just ask a computer. But yeah, so you can see here the like a wonderful range of shades that you can get between these two. You wouldn't necessarily expect to get these very nice blues. I think that that's like almost a Prussian blue, isn't it? And I find it so, so nice to see all of these different mixes. I just find it so calming to look up all these different colours. So here's mixing the red with the, like, let's call this the red and the blue. This is kind of an off primary triad here. So this is the red with the blue. And then underneath I did the blue with the yellow. So this is the range of greens that you get. And it sort of goes through this very vivid sort of hooker's green like colour nice shades of turquoise that are just a little bit greener and all the way through to this sort of very green gold type of color and I absolutely love especially the more yellow range of greens I'm not a huge fan of these types of greens but you know what in this limited palette when you put them in context against these nice warm purples these greens look so nice like this is very peacock to me I feel like you could paint a peacock with these colors so you never know what you're going to find when you mix. I've not mixed these colours before. I didn't know what I was getting into. And then I did the yellow with the red. So this is like the range of oranges and sort of reds. Sort of an, 
it's almost like an off red, like a brick red, because this is more of a purpley pink, and this is a warm yellow as well, we don't really get like a nice true bright red or a nice true bright orange, we get these like very more muted burnt oranges, really love this variation, and again with this type of colour chart specifically, I really like that it's very free form, you can really just put on some TV or something and completely zone out and just make these without worrying about any kind of order, you, you don't have to be, they don't even have to be linear, right, like here we went pinker and then bluer and then pinker again, it doesn't matter. So you're, well, I mean to be fair it doesn't really matter for any of these, do what you want, you know, <laughs> whatever you feel like. So, uh, Jules, why are you even making the video in that case? Don't ask these questions. We're going with the flow today. And then I drew five lines on this chart, so I wanted to fill the bottom two as well. So for the bottom two, I sort of mixed this green gold colour with the more orangey colour, because I had those left on my mixing palette. I used this ceramic plate as a mixing palette, as you can see. Always in use. Um, so I was just mixing and experimenting with what kind of nice browns we could get, and you can get some really, really nice tones actually from this primary triad. I, I really, really like these. Some nice skin tones almost in here. Or well, maybe not this one. That's, that's a little bit like you've got liver failure or something, but that's, you know, some nice rosy, rosy tones in here that go through to a nice sort of tan. Uh, and then I mixed the orange again with the green to try and tone down this bright green that we had from up here, so the, oh, the transparent turquoise with the yellow, and to try and tone it down and see what kinds of olive-y, more muted greens that we can get. And I think that this is really nice. These remind me of like a tropical jungle or something. So I recommend these charts for if you are feeling low energy, you have like a limited uh, colour palette you want to try out, or you could just do pairwise colours per row and, and just swatch away to your heart's desire. Some people will tell you that this is not making art, and maybe they're right, maybe they're not right, I don't really care, I've decided. Um, so, you know, decide for yourself, but I can say that that was rather freeing. So hopefully uh, you're also feeling a little bit inspired by this, because I know it's helping me. Here is the same principle with these charts. This is actually from a recent video that I did with my uh, limited palette of autumn colours. Um, you can see that because it was the last video that I posted. Make sure to check out the colour swatching. I've also got a, a playlist of limited palette videos. Might be inspiring if you like this video. Um, this is the same kind of principle as this, so sort of serial mixing, but in like a more uh, regimented format, so this has obviously seen better days as well, it's been lying around on my desk. But basically the idea here is that you mix them in more of an order, so starting from one colour and heading towards the other, and for each of the mixes you do two different tints, so adding a little bit more water. And I find that this can be really nice for seeing like really what the range of colours you can get between two specific colours is. And if you do it like this, so you've got three mixes on one sheet, then you, if you have like a primary triad, so if you just had the red, yellow and blue for example, then you could easily fit the entire range of uh, secondary mixes on a sheet like this. Uh, and here I kind of went a little bit off piece because I had four colours, so I chose to omit the mixing the orange because I was already including an orange, so I decided to do the orange to blue mixes instead. Like I say, this swatch sheet, you know, it's not perfect. But what is? I'm not, that's for sure. Um, and I also really like looking at these. I have like a bit of a catalogue of these because I was doing this thing where I made a... Um, I put all of my watercolour paints by colour into... Um, a computer file and then generated a little script to uh, choose random colours for me to mix and I had some great times doing that so maybe I should bring that back with some of these other colour charts. So these are for sort of the basic um, colour mixing when you have just a few colours, you want to try it out, you're looking for some simple formats. This I didn't even draw boxes for this uh, second one as you can tell, I just kind of did it by eye. Um, but if you're if you want to put in a little bit more effort, then I can recommend these color wheels, which are so satisfying to look at. So I drew these with a pair of compasses or whatever you call them. These things. The Germans helpfully call it a circle. 
which is funnily enough not the word for circle in German. Don't get me started. Um, and then I drew freehand because I couldn't find my projector. Um, some I, I cut these into sort of twelve, like a pie. Oh, this one's eight. You can do what you like. You're the master of this project. So starting from sort of simplest to more complicated, I think I'll start with this one first. So this is a bit of a different kind of colour chart. This colour chart has the idea that you are interested in seeing what colours you can mix with one specific colour. So in this case, I chose the sort of viridian green. I think this is the Schmincke chromium oxide green intense or something. It's like a mixture of a PG7 thalo green and actual genuine viridian, PG18 pigment codes for the nerds um and so here i drew these circles and did like a dilution of that paint and i drew those circles using this helpful stencil that i bought for no reason probably in a 2am amazon purchase one time however it turns out to be really helpful so you never know when you're going to need something like that and then I put the colour at mass tone in the middle here, and then I mixed it with these colours around the outside. So this thin ring is where I put the mass tone of the colours I was interested in. So I think this is again the Quinacridone Future, Buff Titanium, Transparent Orange, uh, maybe this is a Thalo Blue Red Shade? The, the colours are actually irrelevant for this video, but you can see where I was going with this. Um, and I mixed from the outside in different proportions heading towards having more of the green. And obviously there are some colours where I could have gone more or less extreme, depending on how far apart the colours are. You can be the master of that decision as well. Um, and maybe you try it out and you realise that, hang on, I don't think I got quite all the mixes that I could have done out of this one, for example. And then maybe you need to go and do a little chart like this where you just do a whole row or two rows or three rows just looking at the colours you can mix between those two. So this can be really good if you just have one colour you want to study um, and not, you know, you just want to try it with a range of colours, not for any particular reason. So this is another good colour wheel. Next up, so this is... This is a, an interesting concept. So these two colour wheels both use the same primary colours. I used this, I think I even put them in the same orientation. There you go. So I used this uh, regular yellow, this is like a benzamidazolone yellow, PY154, and the permanent alizarin crimson, I think, that's what's here, um, which the pigment number escapes me now. Maybe it'll come back to me later, but this is from Roman Schmoll, their permanent lizard in crimson. And then this is Prussian blue. So these were the three primaries that I chose for both of these colour wheels. And you'll notice they look slightly different. And I'll explain to you the reason now. So this colour wheel, I was only doing mixes between the three primaries. And how it worked is that I would I mixed all of these the the pairwise mixes on the edge and then for each of the pairwise mixes I mixed it with the one on the opposite side of the colour wheel. So I think this is actually really interesting because you would think that they would all converge towards being the same brown tone in the middle because you know they're the three, same three colours so eventually you would end up back in the middle but it turns out that no, actually not true at all. So I think it's 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 really, really interesting if you only wanted to use three colours, but you also wanted to explore the neutrals you can get, then you could do a colour wheel like this. And I think it's actually quite interesting because then you also have a systematic way to document, for example, oh, this nice sort of muted olive green here, I got that by mixing mostly blue with this sort of even mixture of the yellow and the red, so the sort of red-orange. And then so you can recreate this a little bit easier than if you just did some random mixes like I did here. Like you have more of a proportional representation of exactly the colours that you mixed and exactly the ratios that they were in when you made them. Um, you might notice that here I, I messed up these two. They should be the other way around, but that's okay. I wasn't about to do it all again just for this video. Um, and it might happen sometimes. I mean, there's also some things I would change here. For example, I think that I could have gone higher intensity on this particular segment. But so this is this is if you're interested in looking at all of the mixes that you can make using only your three primaries. However, recently I've been more and more interested in including three primaries plus a fourth color. 
a bit of a wild card, perhaps. And I think that this especially applies if you want to use a neutral. Um, it's quite famous. I mean, I've seen a lot of videos on this. Maybe I'll do one too, because maybe you would like to hear me talk about it. And maybe I also need to go into this topic a little bit further. But the idea that you can use a fourth colour to unify a palette. So you can choose any group of random colours, but if you're adding the same colour to it, whether it's a neutral or a complementary or a completely random colour, then all those colours, it will bring them into some kind of cohesive palette. Um, I think this is a really cool concept. And so I wanted to do a series of these colour charts, kind of experimenting with what happens if I pick a different neutral colour. So this was the Cypress Raw Umber Deep from Roman Schmoll. It's like a cool brown. I've been really interested in cool browns lately for most of my life. I've not understood cool browns, never wanted to use them. Um, but recently I've been feeling them a lot more than the warm browns, which is just interesting. And you can also see a little bit of granulation here coming from this. And doesn't this colour mixes with the Cypress Raw Umber Deep make the most amazing, moody, muted colour wheel? If this was Nicolazo Yellow, we would be having even more of a moody, muted time. Um, but this is exactly the same colour wheel, like around the edge of this colour wheel is exactly the same as around the edge of this one. So just mixing from the yellow to the red, like a normal colour wheel, but then instead of mixing uh, each one with its complement directly across from it, I'm mixing with the Cypress Rhomba Deep. So it's just gradually muting these colours down, though I could have chosen literally anything, I could have chosen like a light blue or something. Oh, now there's an interesting concept. Um, but yeah, you can really see evidence of how that theory works, that you can choose any colour palette. And if you mix them all together in some kind of uh, way <laughs> that makes logical sense, then you will bring everything into the same colour space and you will have a nice colour palette. But this is just a beautiful colour chart, I think. I think it would look great on a wall. <laughs> and if you wanted to, you could do, put masking fluid around the rings or something to do make this a little bit tidier I, I quite like the it's a little bit messy I also quite like the idea of getting a sketchbook and just having like a whole book full of these kind of color mixing charts I have kind of an idea coming up on that but I've already got too many sketchbooks so not right now um but yeah so those are the colors uh, color charts rather that I wanted to introduce to you today so just to recap we have the color wheels so these two with the three primaries this one with an added fourth color a wild card and this one uh, focusing on mixing with uh, a particular color that might be your favorite at the time and then these two which are focused more on just looking at the colors this one a little bit more randomly and this one a little bit more systematically so hopefully this helps if you're curious about how to make your perfect colour chart, how to look into what your perfect colour palette would be. Maybe you have some ideas. You can also share your favourite colour mixes with me in the comments. I will be making more of these. Before I go, uh, I have an idea for 2025. I know this sounds crazy because that's like two months away, but maybe I am a little crazy. Um, but I was thinking about bringing uh, some kind of newsletter or blog, probably via Substack, um, as a compliment to my channel, you know, I think it might just be nice to mix things up a little bit. I'm just trying to get like a little bit of a gauge what the interest would be since you've stayed till the end of the video. You're the diehard fans. Thank you so much. Um, leave me a comment down below. I'll probably also do a poll on my community page. YouTube loves to get people engaged like that as well. So it'll probably help everybody. Um, but yeah, let me know. Do you follow any newsletters? What do you like about them? I'm not really like a newsletter person, but I think I would enjoy sharing, for example, could share some of these pictures as uh, static images, you know, and write a little bit more about them so you don't have to listen to me rambling. Maybe you would like that. So let me know in the comments down below, uh, alongside your ideas of other things that you might like to see or general stories about your day. Love to interact with you guys in the comments down below. Thank you for sticking with me for this one and we're going to make it through this creative block together. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in two weeks with another video. Bye everybody.